Dr. Michael Wu. Welcome, my friends. Hopefully you are all fine. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, Atu, uh, thank you for always asking me back to, uh, to see all my old friends because uh, I, I was uh, telling people that you know, the gamification community is actually very near and dear to my heart. And uh, even though I already now switch my focus to focus on uh, more um, artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, I still actually am very passionate about you know, changing human behavior. So uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share some of my, um, uh, my insights. Thank so, you. Yeah, thank you. And, and so, so without further ado, uh, let's start. And I am going to share my presentation. Maybe you didn't see, but Yukai uh, write something for you too. Maybe you want to say something back to him. <laughs> he says, you are a great guy, also very humble. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you're kind. You're, you're, you're too kind. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's uh it's it's great to see every everybody here. Uh, so obviously, you know, um, since I have, uh, I would say a little switch in in focus, um, and I um, want to talk a little bit about you know gamification and artificial intelligence, and how they actually create almost like a learning loop itself. Okay, and. Um, so if you actually look at um, this two subject, right, artificial intelligence and um, and gamification, you almost wonder like what do they have to do with each other? You know, like if you look at AI, there are you know things that involve a lot of mathematics and, and statistics and, and computer science. And on the on the other hand, you know, gamification is all about design science, behavior science, psychology, and all this you know behavior economics. You know, I mean. They, they almost look like nothing <laughs> related to each other, right? Uh, but surprisingly, you know, one of the those amazing things about artificial intelligence these days is that, you know, uh, it's all about like machine learning something. You know, these machines are become smart because they they can they have the ability to learn. And um, whereas in you know in the gamification world, you know, it's it's about human. Uh, learning something too, you know, human actually are, can actually learn to exhibit these new behaviors. Okay, and I don't think I need to say or tell you that you know the world of I would say artificial intelligence is blown up. You know, and part of it is because of the popularity of you know ChatGPT that that's been around a lot end of last year, and it, it's it's been a little bit crazy. Okay, everybody's kind of uh, wondering you know what to do with it. And, some are afraid of it, you know, which are legitimately a a, a, a concern. Okay, so um, um, now um, I, I wanted to say that you know, like, but if you think about this, the AI artificial intelligence is actually made possible by machine learning. Right? And how do machines actually learn? They actually learn from playing games in the beginning. Okay, so you know, if you actually look at some of the these histories, you know, early on, you know, like I think, you know, machines have been programmed to play many games, I would say chess to checkers to, you know, various poker games. And, you know, so, I mean, and you can see that there's a long time uh, between like when they were start being able to start to play the game to when they were able to start to beat human, right? So I, obviously the, the famous, some of the famous one that I want to highlight here is the uh, you know, uh, IBM's Deep Blue was able to beat, you know, uh, the champion, uh, the best human uh, chess player in the world um, in 1997. And then, you know, Watson was, uh, IBM's Watson, again, IBM was a big name back then, right? So uh, they were able to beat, you know, the, uh, the top on the Jeopardy uh, player in 2011. And then, you know, more recently, you know, not too long ago, Deep Mind actually, uh, Built this AI called AlphaGo, you know, that plays the game of Go. You know, Go is actually very difficult. Unlike you know, poker or, or chess, and you know, the, the amount of number of pos possible move, right? Uh, from Go, it's, it's actually so great that you know, there's no way any kind of uh, machine can actually just brute force memorize or, or, or kind of plan. Um, in, a, in any brute force way. Okay, so the amount of possible moves in the Go board is actually more than the number of like atoms in the entire universe, 
you know, that's just enormous. You cannot even fathom how, how, how big that is, okay? And yet, you know, DeepMind's AlphaGo is able to beat, you know, the, the world champion, you know, uh, in, in Go, right? Uh, the, this Korean uh, named uh, Lee Se-do, okay? And finally, you know, say, well, these are kind of, you know, board games that they're, they're kind of, you know, not, uh, not so impressive, right? But, you know, later on, OpenAI, you know, 5, was able to beat, you know, uh, Dota, you know, Defense uh, of the Ancient, you know, uh, Dota 2, you know, which is a highly complex strategic game. You know, they were able to beat them, you know, one versus one in 2017. But the interesting thing about like Dota 2 is that it's actually a team game. It's, like, it's a group uh, game, right? You 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 play with five players in a team and you coordinate you 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 um, uh, to 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 win, right? To achieve the objective, right? And a year later. You know, OpenAI, you know, was able to beat, uh, you know, the, the real team, you know, uh, a five player, you know, so it's it's just like un unbelievable. And most recently, I would just say like even Meta actually created a, a an AI called Cicero. You know, they were able to play the the game of uh, diplomacy and and actually win in many cases as well, as well. Okay. So now you may wonder, like, what you know? So obviously, AI actually learn from human, right? So what what can human actually learn from AI, right? So yeah, obviously, we can learn a lot from AI too, right? You know, this, this is actually a, a case of I would say uh, human learning collectively from everyone because AI, what they have do, what they what they have done is that you know through this uh, machine learning training process, they have learned everything from everyone that's out there. Okay, so you know there, uh, you know the reason why you know AlphaGo is able to beat uh, Li Sedo is he's, he's the this AlphaGo program has seen all the different gameplays in, in the world and learned from them. And moreover, you know they play with itself and basically it, it, it you know with so many games that it, it's more than I would say any human player can play in their entire lifetime. So what that means is that you know, AlphaGo can make all the mistakes that a human could ever make in their entire lifetime, probably, you know, 10 lifetime, okay? And then learn from those mistakes and never make those mistakes again, okay? And that's how they are able to kind of, you know, uh, beat the, uh, the world champion, right? So, I mean, so through this process, right, you know, uh, the, um, all these AI have, have become essentially a collective uh, knowledge from, from everyone. And by learning from them, we actually learning from everyone. That's you know used to be thought as you know something that's pretty much impossible, right? So we learn strategies from from AlphaGo, right? We learn teamwork from from Dota, you know, uh, and we uh, Cicero is actually you know surprisingly good at you know able to negotiate you know even uh, uh, with with player with other human players as well, you know, either to collaborate or or to kind of um, you know to negotiate for a strategy, right? And and this is uh, and even you know recently you know with, with the launch of ChatGPT, we humans can actually learn how to communicate more effectively as well by just watching how ChatGPT communicate. Right, it's actually pretty amazing. Now, um, so one of the really interesting thing that I always get uh, think about is is like you know how can AI actually uh, benefit gamification? You know, so so this is a, a probably really relevant for everyone here doing this hackathon because, you know, obviously, how can AI help, right? I mean, how can AI help you? Now, if you actually think about some of the biggest challenge in, in gamification, right? Some of these are, I would say, long-term gamification, right? Gamification usually work extremely well short-term, but then they don't work as reliably for long-term, right? And to address this problem, I actually have, have already, you know, built many um, tools, you know, these uh, gamification spectrum uh, to help you design it's uh, essentially a game within the game, gamification within the gamification, right? And then have this uh, a ladder structure for you to, you know, engage people at different time scale, right? So you can engage people uh, in a short time scale, and then if the behavior that you're trying to drive is a long-term behavior change, right? Then you have to use longer and longer um, uh, kind of uh, gamification tool tools that has a longer and longer feedback time scale, right? And uh, some of the uh, and then one of the uh, the other problem is that like well I mean human also don't learn very fast right I mean so it, it does take time for humans to to learn to change this behavior and and then you know and also sustain this behavior over long term right and you know so what's the problem right the problem is that like we 
I would say that, you know, in, I would say not just in the gamification community, but I think in general, uh, a lot of times human, when, when we, when we try to make things simpler, we almost overgeneralize, right? I mean, for one example, it's like, for example, we talk about bottles, player type, right? So and there were four player type, but do we really only have four type player out there? You know, there's, you know, think about it. There's an entire world. There's only four player uh, kind of archetype, right? It's a, definitely an over uh, simplification, right? And then, you know, and then people kind of make things more complicated, right? And, you know, there's like, eight kind of, uh, you know, different player typology. And then there's 16 kind of different uh, motivational elements that motivate. So after a while, you know, it gets a little more and more complicated, right? Uh, which is, I would say necessary because the world is actually not that simple. You know, we are actually not that simple, right? So very often I, I would propose something called data-driven design, right? You really need to analyze, you know, the behavior of your audience and then basically come up with behavior analytics and then design kind of, I would say this gamification spe spectrum, right? So uh, so now, even if you actually do this, right? For the, uh, for the, for your entire population. So this, this, this spectrum is actually designed for your, your audience, right? Your target audience that you, you, you analyze. There's still a, a problem that, you know, this is actually even up is optimized for a population, it's optimized for everyone in your target audience, right? So it is, it is the best you can do, but it's still kind of one, I would say, structure, one journey, kind of you design, right? So, so the 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 the, 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 the problem is that if, you know if it's optimized for the entire population, it's actually optimized for uh, not for no single player, right? It's optimized for for no one single. Right, so it's optimized for no one, right? So and this is actually why you know, like some you know, some of these uh, gamified behavior, you know, they still take a long time, right? So even somebody may actually go through this very quickly, right? But for those people who where they are not actually optimized for, it does take them a long time. Sometimes they're stuck, you know, in different places in in these uh, in this gamification uh, spectrum, these ladders, you know, and 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 you know, so they don't actually go through this uh, quickly as quickly as as they could, right? And the reason is actually very simple, right? Because everyone is actually unique, you know? No one is, is actually exactly like, you know, someone else, you know, like every one of us, even if you look at just uh, what we are motivated by, what we're interested in, what we like to do, right? Uh, we are unique in some sense, right? Think about this. Is there another person in this world that's exactly like you? You tell me, okay? I don't think you could find one very easily. You know, you, I mean, unless you have, uh, I know, identical twin or <laughs> something like that, right? Maybe, right? It's really, really, really rare, okay? Uh, maybe you, you could find one, but, but it's really, really rare, okay? Everyone is actually unique, right? So what can we do? And this is actually where AI can actually come and help, right? You know, because one thing that AI does really well is the ability to adapt, right? To adapt and, uh, and it's actually, uh, I would say, to the environment. And, and in this case, apply to gamification is actually adaptive to you and your behavior, right? So essentially we can almost create this kind of personalized uh, gamification, right? It's, uh, which is actually optimized for every single person, every single player, right? So what, what kind of things can we do, right? I mean, so you can adapt, you know, I would say the difficulty level, right? Some people, you know, like simple things. Some people are, you know, they're, they're in a certain area that let's say, I don't know, in, in um, uh, weight training or something, right? Maybe they're not they're not that strong, right? Some people are stronger than others, right? So so they need to start, you know, simpler, right? So you could you you could adjust these uh, difficulty level in cases where I would say uh, it's not a kind of a, a competitive scenario, right? Because obviously you can't uh, have a competitive scenario and make a game easier for someone and <laughs> harder for someone. Right, so so that's uh, not going to be fair, right? It's not going to be a, a fair uh, a competition there anymore, right? So in non-competitive situation, you could you could adjust the uh, difficulty level to to the person, and uh, whereas if you are in some kind of competitive scenario, right, you, you probably need to use these, I would say, um, gamification spectrum, something like that. But the thing is that you can actually uh, use uh, these targeted kind of challenges. You could actually use predictive analytic to predict, you know, how people are going to progress through these type of uh, 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 gamification spectrum, this, this ladder, okay? And see that, you know, if someone's actually 
going slower, right? Then basically you can actually use these uh, mission and side quests, right? You know, if they're kind of stuck in some places, right? Maybe they need a little bit more motivation there, right? Just give them a, a mission, a side quest that's a little different and to engage them to do something, right? If they need to collect a, a, a couple more stars or something like that and in, in, in this, um, in, 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 on, on the spectrum to get onto the leaderboard, right? Then, you know, create a mission, like, you know, uh, do tell them what they need to do to collect this two star or and then, and then give them a time limit, right? If they need to share this uh, uh, information with two friends or some, uh, you know, with five friends, with, with, you know, then then you tell them that, you know, please, you know, if you share uh, this, uh, this video with, with five friends within this week, you, you, you get two stars and then, you know, you don't tell them that you just get on the leaderboard because, uh, and once they get on, they'll know, right? So, so you, you create a mission, but these missions are now can be, I would say, apply as needed, right? Some people may not need it, right? So it, it doesn't have to be the same uh, game and experience for every single one. Some people actually go through this very quickly. They, they, they don't actually need to have these side quests and then missions, right? And you can actually offer, AI can also like offer real-time feedback, right, to the user. Right. So this is uh, what to feedback and, and, and how to feedback and, and, and everything like right, that you can actually feedback that's actually relevant uh, to uh, the person's kind of, um, I would say, receptiveness to, to feedback. Okay, so some, some people like, you know, a lot of feedback, some people like to be left alone. And then um, so, uh, and, and that's kind of, I would say, you know, uh, different people have, you can actually have different strategies of, of delivering these feedbacks back to the person based on what's actually most effective for them, right? And you can actually learn, uh, AI can actually learn what's most effective through this process called reinforcement learning uh, to see which one is actually most effective as well, okay? And finally, you know, um, uh, personalization AI can, can also essentially uh, have, you know, with ChatGPT now you can actually um, have this uh, language and dialogue, you know, with the user, you know, and not only you can actually uh, have different strategies of feedback, you can even use different styles of feedback, right? Are you more um, of a kind of a competitive person where the, the, this AI need to challenge you, right? Or are you more of a kind of a, a socializer type of people where, where you, you like to be encouraged and motivated, right? So um, ChatGPT can actually write the same thing in you know, 10 different ways, right, to motivate different people, right? So even your engagement style can be personalized, right? So, so essentially you can see that, you know, this is actually a very adaptive, right? It's adaptive, you know, because, you know, everybody goes through this ladder in different speed, different way, right? As needed, you know, if you see when they actually slow down, when they start, you know, AI can actually in, 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 intervene and actually come in and, and apply these, uh, um, uh, I would say, um, side quests and mission as needed, right? And in, and it, it, it creates this almost like a hierarchical structure, right? And it's different for everybody, right? Because now it's, you can uh, personalize even down to the engagement style, okay? So so this is actually how, you know, um, AI can help gamification. Now, on the other hand, you know, like how can gamification benefit the AI community as well, right? Uh, so this is actually a question uh, I think about a lot too, because now I am in, in, in this, this world, right? So some of the, if you think about some of the biggest challenge uh, of uh, in the artificial intelligence world, right? Uh, certainly existential threat is one of them, right? Now, how do we make sure these AI don't come around and, and, and destroy us all, right? So this is uh, certainly a legitimate concern, right? So even if um, the AI don't come around and destroy us all, right? What about the AI bias problem, right? I mean, AI is actually uh, biased, you know, after, shortly after um, ChatGPT has been launched, you know, uh, people have given it various uh, exams and, and stuff. And guess what? They're biased, you know? Um, so, and, and, you know, this actually, ChatGPT, in fact, fail every single bias test, you know, we, we political bias, you know, this is actually people trying to understand the political uh, bias uh, in, in this uh, ChatGPT. In fact, they, they fail every single test we could buy. We, we could actually uh, uh, give it to them, right? And now it's, it's, uh, it's gotten slightly better, but uh, still, uh, it's not uh, neutral, right? And when things are when you when it becomes this information source that uh, people go to, and you are not being objective, not being uh, I would say you know unbiased, then how can people actually you know believe you? How can and basically this people are thinking that you know this is gonna 
essentially uh, destroy the fabric of our society and, and create havoc, right? And, and because these kind of things have happened before, okay? In, in fact, you know, like uh, um, if you look at history, you know, the printing press, right, uh, created a world where uh, books and, and knowledge become uh, much cheaper and accessible to everyone, right? And then people are saying that, you know, this is going to destroy uh, the fabric of the society. And, and, you know, because people are going to be able to read the Bible and interpret it by themselves instead of talking to priests. And, and so um, that actually, you know, did actually create it, uh, I would say, uh, a lot of havoc, you know, like, uh, you know, probably it did destroy the society to in, in some sense, in a way that it created the Protestant uh, Reformation movement. Right. And, 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 but, you know, it's a disruption, but you also create a lot of goods afterwards. Right. So, uh, so I do believe that people can adapt. Right. So, um, yeah. So fundamentally, I would say that the problem is that like human are actually inherently somewhat biased. We don't make perfectly unbiased decision every single time. Right. And um, also like, you know, that we all, you know, if, if there's actually any existential threat is that, you know, we are actually the threat to ourselves, you know, because, why do you think about it, if, there, if there's any existential threat, if the AI actually tries to destroy us, we really have no chance, okay, <laughs> at all, okay? If the AI wants to destroy us, we have no chance. Uh, but the, you have really have to ask, why would the AI want to destroy us, right? And remember, how do AI learn? They learn from data, right? But who generated those data? It's really us, right? We generated all those data that AI learned from. The reason the AI want to destroy us, right, is probably because you know every time we we come into a situation of conflict, we are trying to destroy each other, right? So so that is it's how AI learn. No, this is actually how humans you know resolve problem and 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 compete with each other, kill kill each other, right? So if they come into conflict with humans, they would believe that they would know and, and actually believe that's actually the the of the way to to solve problem because they learn from our data, right? So um, so anyway. So that's the best. So I think the best way for uh, you know uh, humans to to prevent this existential threat from from AI is that we actually need to be better humans, right? Uh, we need to be uh, uh, you know good humans, right? The problem is that like humans often don't learn fast enough, right? And and this is actually where gamification can really help, right? So I know I'm out of time, so I'm going to go rather fast, right? So gamification can can really help changing and upgrading our own behavior so that we can actually be better humans, okay? So we can actually uh, have gamified learning that's actually uh, fun. So we actually learn faster and, and, and you know, adopt these new behaviors uh, faster and better behavior, right? We can actually reward, use gamification, for example, right now to reward these uh, less biased uh, behaviors and less biased decisions. And if these, these data are actually feedback to uh, the decision makers, right? maybe they will actually change the, how they make decisions, right? Uh, you know, that is actually in a less biased way, right? And we also can reward long-term thinking decisions, right? So that we, we don't think about just the, the present and, and we start to value, you know, uh, uh, what's um, to come as well, right? So, you know, so with AI and gamification together, you know, we actually can create a much better humanity, you know? so. In one way, I would say that you know AI can help gamification uh, in in a way that it can actually help human uh, not just learn new behavior but better behavior, better decisions, so that we can actually be better humans, right? And then uh, in turn, you know, machine can now actually learn not just intelligent behavior but actually can learn uh, these good human qualities from us. Okay, so uh, I I do have hope that we we'll have a bright future or if we actually do combine uh, this uh, two worlds together. So thank you everyone. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. That was great presentation. I mean, everyone just keep uh, thinking about uh, artificial intelligence. If they know us, better you know our motivational source and our player types maybe systems wise will be very easy to motivate us easy to motivate our kids easy to motivate our workers employers customers it's going to be much better experience for everyone 
So thanks for this great presentation. Uh, well, again, and everyone just so inspired, inspired already. I see. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.